memberkati kami semua Bapak Tuhan sebentar lagi kami akan memberikan persembahan apa Untuk memberkati semua tangan yang sudah memberi Bapak Untuk pelabaran kerajaan Tuhan Terima kasih ya Tuhan kami mau memberi hanya di dalam nama Yesus Haleluya, amin
cross, hallelujah, hallelujah. At the cross I bow my knee, where your blood was shed for me. There's no greater love than me. You have overcome the grave. Your glory fills the highest place. What can separate me now? Stay at the cross, church. Passover and 
um, the Resurrection Sunday. Okay, and as we try to go through uh, this definition of this celebration, it is important for us to know two very important points uh, in relation to what we will be celebrating next week. Amen? The first one is sin. Tell the person next to you, sin. Sin. And the second one is salvation. Salvation. Amen? Because what we will be celebrating next week, church, the Good Friday, it's called Good Friday, I believe, because indeed, because of that Friday, the goodness of the Lord was really given to all mankind, if you believe, say amen. amen. Because He's done it on the cross. He's paid all on the cross, if you believe, say amen. Amen. So what we will be celebrating this coming week is related to both sin and salvation. Okay? What Jesus went through on the cross was because of our sins. But after what he's done on the cross, salvation has been given freely to you and me. If you believe, say amen. 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 Hallelujah. So today, it is part one of our celebration of Passover. And we're going to be learning more about sin. Tell the person next to you, point at them and say, don't sin. Don't sin. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. We're going to go through everything now. Let's uh, go straight to the Bible verse for today. It is from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 23 to 24. I'm going to ask all of you to stand up again together with me. Okay? And we're going to get ready to read this Bible verse. Are you guys ready? Yes. I'm going to ask for your help to read for me because I'm going to open my material for you guys. Okay, you guys ready to read this? Yes. Okay. On top of your lungs, shout it out. One, two, three. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's right. Lord, we thank you because by your grace and through the redemption that we receive from our Lord Jesus Christ, we are now free. And we are celebrating that freedom, Lord Jesus. And so, Lord, speak to us today, particularly about sin. Give us the knowledge so that not only we will be able to stay away from sin, but we will be able to be your mouthpiece, Lord, to speak to the people around us so that they too will leave their sinful nature and go back to their godly nature as we all have been created by you in that nature. Thank you so much, Lord. Speak to us in the name of Jesus, we pray. And one side. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Romans 3, 23, 24 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. From this Bible verse, we have four points regarding sin. Okay? So there are four points today that I want to talk to you about in relation to sin. Tell the person next to you four points. Four points. Okay? The first one is that all have sin. If you believe, say amen. Amen. It's not something that we should be proud about. All have sin. Everybody has sin. But you know what? The reason why we're shouting, you know, in uh, confidence, saying that everybody has sin, all have sin, it's not because we're proud of that sin. But it's because we are acknowledging that we are all sinners and we need our sins to be cleansed away. If you believe, say amen. amen. Okay? So, the second one, sin make man lose God's glory. Okay? Sin make man lose God's glory. The third one, sin is washed away by God's grace. And the fourth one, sin is washed away through redemption in Christ Jesus, if you believe, say amen. amen. Now we're going to go through one by one. Okay, the first one, all have sin. Okay, once again, Romans 3, 23, 24 says, for all have sin. Let us now highlight all have sin. Tell the person next to you, all have sin. All have sin. 
I mentioned just now the reason why we say it out loud with confidence is not because we're proud of the sin, but it's because we're acknowledging that we're sinners and we need for those sins in our lives to be washed away by our Lord Jesus Christ, if you please say amen. amen. And that's the reason why to make a step towards that salvation, everybody, everybody must acknowledge, must understand, must know that we're all sinners. If you don't think that you're a sinner, it'd be really, really hard for you to make a step towards salvation. Because you'd be thinking, I don't need salvation. I'm not a sinner. But when you know that you're a sinner, you know that you need that salvation. When you know that you're a sinner, you know that you need that redemption in Jesus Christ, if you believe, say amen. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20, Indeed, there is not a righteous man on earth who continually does good and never sins. There is nobody on earth that has never done sin at all, to start with, okay? Nobody on earth that has never done sin at all. Now, it, it may look like it's a small sin, but I want you to understand that with God, there is no such thing as small sin or a white sin as the world would put it, when you lie for the goodness of all, there's no problem with it. When you do a little bad thing for a larger good thing, there's nothing wrong with it. What I'm telling you right now is, that's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is telling you and me that a sin is a sin, if you believe, say amen. amen. Okay? So it is important for us to understand that nobody on earth that is not a sinner. The only person that has ever walked the earth that has not sinned at all is Jesus Christ, if you will say amen. As I always put it out there, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, He is 100% man and 100% God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. So everyone else, all of us, pastors, leaders, bishops, you know, government officials, even humanitarian activists who seem to be doing good all the time, yeah? Every one of us, we have sin, if you believe, say amen. Okay? And not only that, not only that nobody on earth that has never done sin at all, even if somebody has been saved by our Lord and Saviour, like you and me, the Bible has put it very clear, church, continually does good. There's no such thing. There's no one on earth that can do good things continuously. Okay? There's always a moment in our life, a moment or two, I would say even within a year, there's always a moment or two in the year that we somehow manage to fail in that department. Whether you fail your parents, or you fail your siblings, or you fail your loved ones, or you fail your friends, or even me as pastors, I fail my church members. There's always this moment, church. And the moment that takes place, that is a sin already. We fall short. We fall short of what the glory of God. We're going to talk about that later. We fall short. But it doesn't mean that we lose it all. Amen? It's just that we fall short. Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. So the first point is very clear. All have sin. We must look at salvation. We must look at redemption. Acknowledging that we need salvation. We need redemption. Okay? Because we're all sinners, if you believe, say amen. amen. The second point, okay? Now the Bible continues, Romans 3.23 says, Come short of the glory of God. Okay, so when we sin, praise God, we're not totally cursed. Amen? We just fall from grace, okay? So we come short of the glory of God. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 
God created you and me in His image. And God is glorious. If you believe, say Amen. So if God created you and me in His image, it means we have been created in His glory. If you believe, say Amen. Because we have been created in His glorious image. There's a reason why God created you and me, not like a monkey. Okay? Despite the fact that the world wants to believe that. I don't want to believe that. I mean, I'm full of hair, but I still look much better than a monkey. Don't get me wrong, monkeys are cute. They're cute, but I don't look like that. I know that, okay? And just because they walk on two feet as well doesn't mean we're, we're the same, okay? So, um, we have been created in God's image, church. We are the most perfect creation of God, if you believe, say amen, okay? God did not create all the other things in His image. God created everything with just saying it, remember? Let there be light, let there be this and that, this and that, everything, including animals and plants. That's what God did. But when it came to you and me, when it came to Adam, God created Adam so specifically, church. Not only that God created Adam in his image, God created Adam with his own hands, church. That's how perfect you and me are supposed to be. Okay? So the second point reminds you and me that we were born with God's glory actually. But because of the sin that we received, first because of Adam, and maybe some because of our own wrongdoings, we fall short of the glory of God. Okay? And the problem here is that glory needs to be restored to you and me again. If you believe, say amen. amen. Okay? But bottom line, this second point, sin make man lose God's glory, is to remind you and me that we're not born with defect, if you believe, say amen. We have not been created by God with defect, okay? You know sometimes when you buy something and there's a defect, right? Or if you're looking for a cheaper version of this original brand, you go to this uh, wholesaler or distro, okay? And then you'll try to find, you know, this branded stuff, but you know, it's so cheap and then you find out, oh, it's because there's a little defect here and there, right? Well, God never made us like that church, okay? What happened is, if we want to use that same illustration of buying stuff, it's like we're buying the latest iPhone, most expensive and the latest, and you bought it, and it looks so good, it looks really perfect, you can imagine, right? And then it gets dropped. <coughs> that's right, exactly, that's... I believe that's what God actually felt when we fell to sin. When Adam and Eve decided to sin against God, I believe that's what God felt. Ow! Because I made you so perfect. I made this so perfect. But when it gets dropped, there's crack here and there. Right? But God never made us with crack, church. God made us with perfection, if you believe, say amen. amen. Okay? We have been created with His glory. 1 John 3, 8 says, The one who practices sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. Remember? The devil from the very beginning, in the form of a snake, tempted Eve, and Eve fell, and then after that, Eve dragged Adam, and Adam fell as well. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. So, you need to understand that sin is the work of the devil, okay? Don't believe the devil when he is telling you that it is all your work, no. It's true, many times we fall into sin because of our wrong decisions. Adam fell because of his wrong decision. Eve fell also because of her wrong decision, okay? But the creator of that sin was the devil, okay? 
God is all about creating all the good plans for you and me. And the devil is doing the total opposite of that. Okay? The devil is working 24-7 to create this plan that is so bad to make you and me fall from grace again and again and again. What do I say again and again and again? Because there's just so many Christians out there who keep on repenting and then fall down again and repent again and fall down again and repent again. So I want to reveal now, that's the work of the devil. Don't be fooled by the devil. Because the devil is working 24-7 to make you and me fall from grace over and over again. Okay? But God, the good news is, is working against that. Because God is all about restoring you and me to the factory setting. If you believe, say amen. amen. Because once again, our factory setting is, we are perfect, we are created in His glory. Amen? amen. The next Bible verse, Zechariah 11 verse 3 says, There is a sound of the shepherds wail, for their glory is ruined. There is a sound of the young lions roar, for the pride of the Jordan is ruined. So, we are created in His glory, but our glory is ruined by sin. Just the same way as Adam and Eve fell to sin, their glory were ruined by that sin. Okay? So every time we sin, the glory of God that has been put in our life is ruined, church. Okay? So this is to remind you and me as well that when we have Jesus already in our life, yes, we have been redeemed. Yes, we have been given the salvation. But when we decide to sin again, be careful. Because when we decide to do that, God's glory in our life is tainted again by that sin. And I know it doesn't make you lose your salvation, but imagine a phone again. When you drop it once, there's only one stretch. I dropped my phone just now and I've been asked, how many times, Pastor? <laughs> exactly that question that God would remind you to the question, how many times, my child, have you fallen? Yes, just because you fall once in sin, it doesn't make you lose your salvation, it's true, okay? Just because you fall once doesn't make you broken straight away, it's true. But imagine once, twice, third time, fourth time, and so on, you'll find your phone being so broken that it can't be fixed anymore. And it's the same thing when you allow sin to take over your life slowly but sure. You allow for hatred to take control of your life once. Yeah, you don't lose your salvation, yeah. But then you allow for next person to do something to you and you allow another hatred. And then next thing you know, you're disappointed once again. And you allow for that disappointment to keep on eating you inside out again. And next thing you know, after a couple of times, you're back to being bitter again. That's why you're the one that needs to decide, church. The same way that sometimes we make wrong decisions, you're also the one that needs to make the right decisions. As much as it's really hard to say no to those temptations, Adam and Eve were supposed to say no, okay? And as much as it is hard for you and me to decide to let go of a couple of things in life, whether it is fear, whether it is Bitterness, you just have to decide. It's not easy, I know, but you have to decide because all of those are sins. And just because it doesn't make you broken right away, if you keep them waiting until it eats the whole you, then you're going to find yourself being very broken. Okay? And so let us remember, this is the work of the devil. Don't be fooled, church, once again. When we sin, the devil is ruining the image of God in our lives. Sin is taking away the glory of God from our lives. But the good news is, church, sin can be washed away if you believe, say, amen. amen. Okay? And that comes to the third point. Sin is washed away by God's grace. Let me read to you again the book of Romans, 
chapter 3, verse 24. Being justified freely by His grace. So, the Bible tells you and me that everybody has sinned. But the same Bible passage there, the next verse, okay, is telling you and me that everyone is justified freely by God's grace. Okay? This means that even though everybody has sinned, God is reminding you and me that everybody's sins can be washed away. If you believe, say amen. Okay? So that's the reason why we were shouting for the first point with all confidence. First of all, not because we're proud of the sins, but we acknowledge that we need that redemption. We need our sins to be washed away. And also it's because we're confident that our sins can definitely be washed away. Okay? Not because of us, but because of God. We sang that song, Because of who you are, it's all because of Him. If you believe, say Amen. amen. First John chapter 3, verse 8, once again, The one who practices sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Right now, I want to highlight the Son of God appeared for this purpose. Okay? Sin is washed away by God's grace. So sin is washed away not because of our work, not because of anything else, but because God wants you and me to be free from sins. Simply just because. Say to the person next to you, just because. God wants to wash your sins away, my sins away, because He wants to do it. Why? We have already discussed from the previous point because we have been created in His image. It means we are representing His bread. Is that correct? So, see, it's like if you're an influencer nowadays, that's the word, right? Influencers. Okay? On Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, you know, whatever that you say influence people, right? And a lot of brands in the world hire influencers to put on their products and put on Instagram and then a lot of people will follow that influence and buy those products, right? Meaning those influencers represent those products. And if those influencers do not go up to the standard of those brands, then either the brands, okay, the companies will tell them off or they will drop them off. Right? Well, the good news about you and me representing God's brand is that we're not going to be dropped off just like that because that has to be the end of the world. Okay? But right now, it's not the end of days just yet. So, praise God for that. There's still time. Okay? So, God is not about dropping off all His influences, which is you and me, His believers. But God is about telling all His influences to make sure that we deliver what we're supposed to deliver, that we represent His image. And that's the reason why God is interested, He alone is interested in restoring His image in you and me. So yes, He's doing it because He loves you and me, but I want to make you realize how important it is for God. Why? Because for God, you and me, we're not just His children. You and me, we are His soulmate. That's why the Bible is describing you and me, His church, as the bride and God as the groom, Jesus as the groom. We are Jesus' soulmate church, okay? And so, when you are soulmate, two is one, right? I roll and this is Joyce, you're no longer two, you're one. Okay? Oh, true. Don't say it that way because I feel. <laughs> okay, that's true. Okay, so um, this means that whatever that brother Iroll does now, okay, even though it's not what you do, people will still think that how come he's done such thing? Haven't you ever told him? 
not to do those things all the other way around. What you do that perhaps upset people, people will probably think also, I think it's because I will teach in her. Even though that's not even the case. But that's what happens when you're married, right? Sometimes people think that Pastora is doing certain things because I influence her. Or the other way around, that I'm doing things because of Pastora, you know? Um, so that's how it is when we are soulmate, when we are put together already. And between you and me with God, we are one with Jesus Christ. And so not only that we are his children, that he cares so much for you and me, that he doesn't want you and me to continue to be in sin, he doesn't want his image to continue to be tainted. Okay? He doesn't want his glory to continue to be mocked by the world. And that's the reason why he is interested in appearing for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. And that's the reason why Jesus came for you and me, to destroy the work of the devil. Okay? Sin can be washed away, but not because of us, but because God alone wants to do it. The, same. And the next Bible verse, please. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. The next one. Jeremiah 33, verse 8, I will cleanse them from all their iniquity by which they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities by which they have sinned against me, and by which they have transgressed against me. So, it is God's nature, church, it is God's nature to cleanse you and me from sins, okay? Like I said in the beginning, God never created you and me so that we can be sinners. No, we were not created to be sinners. Although we fell from grace and we became sinners. But it was not God's intention in the first place. That was not His purpose to create us to become sinners. We were created to bring His image, to bring His glory. When Adam and Eve didn't sin yet, they both walked the Garden of Eden with God's glory. But when they fell to sin, they lost that glory. And that's the reason why we all inherit that. But also that's the reason why Jesus came, so that he can restore that glory that was lost from the lives of Adam and Eve, to be restored to you and me. The next one, please. Zechariah 4, 6 says, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So remember, when you are redeemed by our Lord, it's not because of your mind or your power, it's not because of your knowledge, it's not because you're so smart to find out that Jesus can save. No. You know, I have experience trying to evangelize so many people and it's just so hard for them to believe. And I come to realize that the Bible says that for those of us who believe and we decide to believe in Jesus Christ, it's because God Himself has lifted the veil that covers our face. If that veil is not lifted up, I can try to evangelize anyone for 100 or 1,000 times even, but that person would never decide to believe in Jesus Christ because that veil is not lifted up just yet. So if we are sitting down here today, church, it's because God has personally lifted that veil from each and every one of us. Not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. Mm -hmm. Not because we are so good in reading the Bible, not because we are so good in memorizing the Bible verses, not because even our parents introducing Jesus to us. That helps. But that's not the reason why you follow Jesus Christ, church. You follow Jesus Christ because you decide to follow Jesus. But it helps. I mean, I grew up in a Christian background. I praise God for that. Since I was born, like Sergio now, knowing how to say amen, you know, in Jesus' name. But 
Me and Pastor Rob, we always tell him, even he doesn't understand yet just now, we always tell him, Sergio, when you grow up, you must have your own personal relationship and experience with Jesus Christ. Because I have seen so many people, even in my family, that knew Jesus since they were young, yet they are not really following Jesus right now. And they still call themselves Christians, but they do what the world is doing. Not bringing the glory of God, but tainting the glory of God. And they all feel that it's okay, it's normal. I want to remind you and me again, it is not okay. But God has mercy. And God is not about to just drop everyone from the contract. God wants to make sure that everyone get back in line and do what we're supposed to do. Bringing and showing God's glory in our lives. If you please say amen. The next one, please. Ephesians 2 8 to 9 say, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So it's not something we should boast about when it comes to our faith, but we can be proud about it. Amen? Just not boast. So, I also disagree with people who try to evangelize other people by saying you don't go to hell because you don't have Jesus Christ. Mm. Is it wrong, Pastor? No, it is a fact. For me, it's a fact. If you don't have Jesus Christ, if we don't have Jesus Christ, we will go to hell. But that's not something we should boast about. That's something devastating, no? Imagine your family members, your friends, the people that you love around you in your life. They don't have Jesus Christ and you know that they're going towards that direction. That's not something you should tell them and say, if you don't have Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. I wouldn't say that because it would break my heart to know that we will be separated. That we're not going to be in the same realm of the Lord, you know. So we should change that. It is a fact. That's not wrong. That's what the Bible is teaching you and me. Amen? If we don't have Jesus Christ, we don't have heaven. But I always teach you guys to say the other way around, although not making a different message of the Bible, but just a different way of putting it. If you have Jesus, you will have heaven. Which one does sound better, church? <laughs> if you don't have Jesus, you go to heaven. Or, if you have Jesus, you're going to have heaven, church. That's the reason why the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in Jesus Christ will not perish, but have eternal life. It's not the other way around. For God so loved the world that if you don't have Jesus Christ, you will perish and you will go to hell. No, God put it that way. So that everybody who believes in Jesus Christ will not perish, but will have eternal life. The Bible is not about curse, church. Yes, the Bible mentions a lot about curse, mentions a lot about, about eternal condemnation, it's true. But the Bible is not about eternal condemnation. The Bible is about eternal life. The Bible is about hope. So that's the reason why we need to tell people that this whole faith to our Lord Jesus Christ, it's not about judgment. Yes, judgment will come, but God is not interested in the judgment. God is interested in you and me being judged in a good way. Because everybody got judged, church. I mentioned just now, if you've done something wrong, people will think that Oh, since Joyce is the one who actually make you do wrong. Or if since Joyce done something wrong, right, it must be because of Brother I roll. Now that's a bad judgment, right? But there's also good judgment. If Brother I roll is doing something good because they're married, we assume also ever since they got married, Brother I roll has changed, right? It happens to me in Pastor as well. If there is any good thing also about myself. And so they always ah, oh, ever since you get married with June. Once again, our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, it's not about judgment, but it is a gift. 
So make it sound like a gift. Don't make it sound like a curse so that people will be scared about the church. Make people to see that church is filled with love and hope, but not to omit. You know the word omit? Omit means erase, okay? Make people out there see that the church is filled with love and hope, but not to erase the fact that there will be judgment, okay? But let's highlight, because of that judgment, Jesus does not want anyone to be judged in a bad way. Jesus wants everybody to come into the judgment and will be judged this way. Says Michelle, you have done great work in your life. You belong in heaven. Says Myrna, you have glorified God through your life. You belong in heaven. Jammers, you did very well. And now you receive the crown of life. That's what they need to hear, church. That yes, there is judgment. Judgment day will come. And yes, the Bible even says that in eternal condemnation, there is the sense of gnashing teeth. You know what gnashing teeth sounds? That's how scary it will be in hell. The Bible does mention that. But the Bible is not about that. The Bible gives a glimpse of that so that people can realize that the reason why the Bible is given to you and me so that we can get the other one. Remember I mentioned just now, the enemy, the devil, is arranging, is planning all the bad plans for you and me. But God is doing the total opposite. He's doing all the good things for you and me. And He wants to see. He wants you and me to see there's good things if you believe. Say amen. The next one, please. The last point. Tell the person next to you the last point. Now, sin can be washed away by God's grace. Amen? Sin can be washed away by God's grace. So it means our sins are washed away because God simply wants to wash away our sins. Amen? But what's the way then? How does our sin get washed away? How do our sins get washed away? We all know here. Only through redemption in Christ Jesus. Amen? This is what we need to tell the world, church. Titus 2 verse 14 says, Who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless thing and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. God himself is for you and me to redeem you and me. God is giving himself to you and me to redeem us so that we can receive salvation and we can be together with him in eternity if you believe say amen. The next verse please. Ezekiel 36 25 says, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. See, God wants to cleanse you and me. And we clean things with water, right? But you know what? We have the best water ever, and that is Jesus Christ, the living water. And only through that living water, we can be redeemed, and we can have salvation, hence the eternal life. Next one, please. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is what we need to highlight, church. When we come to people and showing them that sins can be washed away and it can only be washed away through the redemption of Christ Jesus, don't put up the sins that they've done. Oh, you've done this, 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 and that. But you need them so that they confess their own sins. Not to confess to you, but to confess to the Lord. Because God is faithful and righteous to forgive you and me. Whatever sins that we have. But again, only through Jesus Christ. The next point, the next verse, please. Acts 16, verse 30 to 31 says, What must I do to be saved? They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. It's very simple. You just need to believe in Jesus Christ. While reminding all of us once again that we must 
continue to be careful with the work of the devil. Because even as we believe in Jesus Christ, how many of us fall from Christ again? But the good news once again is God is all about restoring you and me to our factory setting, if you please say amen. Okay? So for as long as God hasn't returned yet, then we can still have the time. But the problem with that is none of us know when Jesus is returning. So if you keep on flying around and thinking that, oh, well, we don't know that Jesus is not returning this year yet, he's not returning next year, he's probably not returning 10 years from now, so maybe I can still be back for the next 10 years, then I will repent. Then that's mocking the law, okay? If you fall because, because simply because of your imperfection, I believe God is about his perfect love and he wants to make you perfect through him, not because of your mind or your power once again, because none of us is perfect, but God is and he wants to make you and me perfect through him, okay? The next one, please. John 5, 24 says, Truly I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him, who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Okay? The judgment is this. But if we believe in him, we will not come into judgment, but we will pass straight away from death to life. Next one, please. Acts 4, 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Only in the name of Jesus Christ we can be redeemed, if you believe, say amen. And the last one. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I believe today's points are very simple, yet they should remind you and me the real meaning of Good Friday next week. So it's not just going to be an event that we do it every year, you know, it's Good Friday, so we're going to have this very unique Messianic Jewish night. It's all just for us as a family of Christ to gather together, have a good time, and so on. But when it comes to faith, it is personal. Tell the person next to you, it's personal. It's between you and God, not between you and the pastor. It's between you and God. But pastor, every time I fail, I come to you and ask for your advice. Yes, but it's still between you and God, because that's God's way of helping you through your pastor, through your spiritual mother, spiritual brother, spiritual sister. So church, four simple points Yet it's very, very strong reminder of what the Good Friday is all about. It's because of sin that Good Friday had to take place. Because if there was no Good Friday, you wouldn't be sitting here today with me together. Okay? Because of sin, everybody has fallen short of God's grace. Everybody has fallen short of God's glory because of sin. All have sinned. And sin made men lose God's glory. But the good news is, sin can be washed away, but by God's grace. Not because of your work, not because of your knowledge, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Just because God wants to cleanse your sins away. And that can only be done through the redemption in our Lord Jesus Christ, as the Bible has put it very clear, there's no other name on earth that can do that but the name of Jesus Christ. And it has been done so at the cross. Everything has been paid for at the cross. Amen? Amen. At the cross of that name. Yeah, I love that song. That's one of my favorite songs. How about we sing that song before we end it, Brother Iron? At the cross, just the, the chorus without music at all. I'm gonna ask everybody to stand up. Let's sing this. At the cross, I bow my knee, where your blood was shed for me. 
There's no greater love than this. You have overcome the grave. You have overcome the grave. Your glory fills the highest place. What can separate me now? At the cross, hallelujah. At the cross of Elman, you clear church, where your blood was shed for me. There's no greater love than this. Sing with a heart full of thanksgiving. You have overcome the grave. Your glory fills the highest place. What can separate me? You tore the veil. You tore the veil. You made a way. When you said. the salvation Lord you tore the veil Lord so that we can see your glory and that we can allow you to restore that glory in our lives Lord Jesus it's not because of our knowledge no not by might nor by power but it's because of you alone Lord it's because you chose us not we chose you Lord Jesus we thank you for the salvation that you have given us Lord thank you for tearing that veil away so that we can see you and your glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we learn about sin again today, Lord Jesus, help us to continue to stay away from sin, Lord Jesus, as it is not our nature. Our nature is the glory of God. We have been created in your glorious image, Lord Jesus, and we're supposed to to bring that glory. We're supposed to represent that glory, Lord Jesus. So help us, Lord, as the devil is working 24 7 to make us fall. We know that you're working even more so to protect us, Lord Jesus. And so help us to make the right decisions. Even if even as we fail to make the right decision, Lord Jesus, help us to make the next decision correctly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for cleansing our sins away, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we pray that what we have learned today, Lord, not only that it will be fruitful in our lives, but it will be extended to the people around us as well, Lord Jesus, to remind everybody that all have sinned, Lord. And because of sin, all have lost your glory. But all can also receive redemption to cleanse all our sins away, mm -hmm. but only through mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, once again. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. My brothers and sisters, let us close our service today. Let us raise our hands. Receive the blessing from the Father in heaven, and together with the love, peace, and mercy, and hope from our Lord Jesus Christ, together with the strength and power and we receive through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, who is faithful until the judgment day, to help us, to remind us to stay away from sins. And if we fall short again, to remind us to quickly go back in line towards you, Lord Jesus, so that when the judgment day comes, we will not be judged as the world, but we will be judged as your righteous and heaven belongs to us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're praying that you continue, you will continue to be with us until Maranatha. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say, Amen. Hallelujah. God bless. Happy Sunday.